All right, welcome to this video. I'm going to be doing a very simple problem on forces transmitted uh, for, for, through a person's legs when they land on a surface. So a 70 kilogram man jumps down uh, one meter onto a concrete walkway. His downward motion stops in 0 0.02 seconds. If he forgets to bend his knees, what force is transmitted to his leg bones? So now what we're dealing with, we're talking, when we talked about projectile motions before, we were talking about air time. Uh, but now we're talking about ground time, okay? So just real quick here. So this is, you know, when we're talking about forces, um, we're talking about the ground time. So just, just, just to review here. So when we talked about projectiles before. So again, projectiles was dealing with air time only. Now we're, when we're dealing with momentum and forces of, uh, on a contact, we're dealing with the ground time, okay? So this is, this is different now. Uh, and, and let me just clarify what I'm talking about here. So before, like if I had an object here and that object was in the air and we want to know the speed right before it hits the ground, we're talking about air time because it's a projectile. But now if I'm talking about momentum, if an object, somebody's jumping down and they hit the ground, right? They hit the ground here. Now we're dealing with ground time. So it's, so it's a totally different concept here. So we want to know what force is transmitted to his leg bones. Okay, so what's the force? transmitted so we're talking about force here and to deal with this um, we basically need to know what's the basic definition of the force here um, so let me just do like a, a a motion of this what what would what would happen here so <clears throat> let's just say that this person has is jumping in the air and they have some force of gravity down like this okay so they're in the air and they're falling right and so what's going to happen next Okay, so here's the whole series <clears> of <throat> this person. They're in the air, they're falling, right? They're falling through the air. They're getting closer to the ground. Now, the only force acting on them when they're in the air is the gravitational force, right? So this is just right here. This is just F of G, right? This, this black arrow. And so it's just F of G in the air. Once it hits the ground, though, there starts the, there's a normal force that starts to grow. Now, this normal force is going to start growing larger and larger and eventually this normal force is going to be larger than the gravitational force so this normal force here is going to grow really large at one point because it has to stop the motion okay so the difference between this normal force and this gravitational force is the net force so there's some net force here so let's just say that your normal force was just for example you know let's just say that it was like a hundred and let's just say that your your gravitational force was just 10 newtons let's just say of this object then your net force would be 90 up now there will be a point so so it's landing the normal force has to has to be greater than the gravity to stop it but then once it's resting on the the ground then the normal force will basically be equal to the gravitational force once it's just resting okay so there's a lot of interesting things happening here because it's like a stop motion series of events here, right? That, you know, it's if it's in the air, you just have gravity, right? You just have FG. Once it hits the ground, there's a normal force that starts to grow and it becomes very large, much larger than the gravitational force because it has to stop the object, right? And then eventually when it's at rest, right? So this is at rest afterwards that's when you know that the normal equals gravity but this is when it's when it's when it's stopping and that's that's what this question is dealing with uh, this question is dealing with this situation here there's some net force acting on that object okay that we need to figure out now we can figure this out through kinematics because they gave us uh, enough information here to do it so he's 70 kilograms he's jumping down one meter and he forgets to bend his knees so what they gave us in this situation they just gave us enough information to do the net force. Okay, so here's our person. They're obviously in this situation where they are stopping, right? So the normal force is greater than the gravitational force. Okay, so what, I'm, what I did here is I'm going to write a, a simple situation of Newton's second law. Okay, so let's just say that I have the normal force here. Let's just say that I have the gravitational force here. And the difference between those is going to be the net force. Okay. And so this problem is really going to set us up to deal with um, just the net force. Okay. So there's a couple of ways we could approach this. If we had normal and gravity, we could we could say the sum of the forces equals 
the net force. But I just kind of drew this so you could see what's happening here, that this net force is just the difference between those two. Um, but really all we need to deal with in this situation is they're giving us the net information here. So um, F net is simply going to equal to MA net. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And again, this is uh, 70 kilograms here. Okay. So the question is, what is the, the net acceleration? How do we find that? And how do we how do we how do we do that given the information? Well, we know the mass, right? The mass is just 70, but so the net acceleration is going to be what's the definition of acceleration? The change of velocity over the change of time, right? That's the definition of acceleration. So they really gave us this information over here. We didn't even need to deal with this. So how are we going to find those? How are we going to find out that information? How do we know what that is? Well, let's keep going a step further. Mass times v final minus v initial over delta t or you can just say t final minus t initial I'm just writing the rest of this out here just to clarify what we have so let's take a look at what we're looking for here if we're looking for let's see the net force okay so I'm gonna check off um, let's check off what we know and what we don't know okay we know the delta t right right the time that it takes them to stop delta t is going to be 0 0.02 seconds, right? Okay. So this 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 information here we know, right? Okay. V final we know, uh it's going to be 0, right? Obviously, right? And we know the mass, right? They t they told us the mass. So what we don't know is what I'm going to circle here, the v initial. So basically what happened was this object it was falling, right? And it fell to a certain distance here. So we need to find out what that is. What was the speed when it hits the ground, right? Well, that speed, we can find it pretty simply that if we take a, a simple situation, I'm, I'm just going to do this with energy because it's a pretty simple way to do this with energy. But if I want to find the speed right before it hits the ground, I know that I can ha I have conservation of energy here. So at the top, I have all potential energy equals mgh. Okay. At the bottom, I have all kinetic energy. Sorry, let me write that with a K. At the bottom, I have all kinetic energy, so I can say K equals one half mv squared, right? So if I want to find the speed at the bottom, I just set those two properties equal. And again, we're just we're in search of this, you know, this this v initial right before it hits the ground. Uh, because again, the, this this is going to be the v initial because this is the speed. It's at rest here. Remember, this is at rest at the top, and they're dropping a distance here of one meter. Okay. So what's the speed right before it hits the ground? Well, if I set the initial potential energy equal to the final kinetic energy, I'm going to have mgh equals one half mv squared. cancel that out and we're gonna get when we get a complete transfer the velocity is always the square root of 2 GH and that's a pretty standard operating procedure uh, if you have a complete conversion here so uh, just kinda think about this 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 is just kind of a situation where if you have an energy problem and you have a complete conversion of potential to kinetic the speed before it hits is the square root of 2 GH um, so just just a pretty basic application here so I'm gonna go back to my force equation here and again I'm solving this symbolically first because we should always solve it symbolically because we want to become very good at physics right we just don't want to be plugging in numbers and not knowing what we're doing so m times v final which we know is gonna be zero minus this speed here right before it hits right because remember it's got this v initial here and then it's gonna be zero after it stops right so we're going to say this is the square root of 2gh and this is going to be over delta t in this case t initial is 0 so just over the t so that's my equation there so if I want to find the actual f net it takes to stop the person I'm going to take my 70 kilograms and this, we can take out the negative. I'm dealing with the magnitude here. I'm just dealing with the absolute value um, times the square root of 
2 times 9.8 times 1. And the time to stop was what? 0 0.02, right? So if we go ahead and just solve that out, uh, we'll get that the net force equals 15,495 newtons, um, 0.2 actually, newtons. So I, I went ahead and solved it here with numbers. And a lot of times when I solve problems just with symbols, people you know, freak out They're like, oh, but you didn't plug the numbers in. Well, let me tell you something. You should be much. You should get comfortable doing physics just with the symbols, okay? Uh, because it's going to make your life a lot easier. This this is really just a secondary thing to plug the numbers in at the end. The, most of the work at this point was just getting um, to to that point of the equation. And the reason why I think it, it's very important for you to be able to do this is because if you just start plugging numbers in at the beginning, you don't really know what's happening, and then you're going to. That's one thing. You just see a bunch of numbers. At least this way, I can see very clearly that I had the mass, v final, v initial. What, where did v initial come from? It came from energy over the time. And then the second thing is, if you if you wait till the very end to plug in the numbers, you're not going to carry your errors forward, because as you plug it, if you try to plug it, try to plug in numbers from the beginning, you're going to just multiply your errors. So I thought that was interesting. Um, that it was 15,495 newtons. Because I had a student ask me the other day and said, how much? can bone withstand? How much can bone withstand? Uh, well, let's just take an example, this example, okay? So what was the FG of the person, okay? FG of the person in this example is just mg, right? So what does that give you when you get mg? What do you get? Well, you get 70 times 9.8. So when you do that, then you get the force of gravity of that person is 686 Newtons. I'll do that in a different color just so you can see. Let's determine how much force did that person take in terms of their body weight. Well, if we want to do that, it's pretty simple. I just take the net force. If I want to get a ratio over the force of gravity, okay? I'm going to take a ratio here. So I'm just taking a ratio here. It's not writing too well now ratio so in this particular example the ratio of the net force versus the force of gravity was 22.59 which means you were withstanding 22 about 22.6 times your body weight with that landing. And I'd say there's a good chance you could be breaking some bones uh, if you land with 23 times your body weight. It's possible that you don't break bones, but that's uh, that's getting up, I would say that's getting up there. Uh, depending on how you land and how you distribute your force, that could definitely break uh, some bones in your legs. So anyway, just thought that was an interesting uh, ending to that question. Just to do like a little re a real world analysis there in terms of the ratio of the landing versus your weight. because. Remember, what determines that force of impact? The force of impact is basically governed by how long it's taking. I mean, it's, de it's determined by your weight, but it's determined by how long that's taking you to stop. And 0 0.02 seconds is not a long time. Um, it's very small, okay? If we're talking about, you know, a hundredth of a second, that's, that's almost nothing. So that's, you know, it's not so much how fast you were going, but it's how short of a time you stop and that's going to increase the force so obviously that was a very abrupt stop and that was almost no cushioning to that landing and then by by doing that you had 22.6 times your body weight you had to withstand on your bones all right that's all I got for this video thanks for watching and check back for more uh, physics videos dealing with forces and energy